There's always a first. So I'm just grateful to God that I have the opportunity to, to be here and share his word. And um, I want to uh, thank Pastor Gary. <clears throat> Pastor Gary, uh, we've gone, gone back, we go back a long ways from seminary days. And he's a pastor that gets things done. And I'm just very grateful to Pastor uh, Gary Tabor for the work that he has done in moving the church forward, helping the church. And um, like I mentioned, he's um, a pastor of the word. My son, who's also a pastor, has followed uh, Pastor Tabor at the uh, Corona Church. And it's always wonderful. It's always a blessing when you can follow a successful pastor. <clears throat> and that's what Gary, Pastor Gary Tabor is. We're good friends. And uh, so now it's my turn to step in. And I thank the Lord for that opportunity <clears throat> to be able to come and share his word. And so today, I want to turn our hearts and minds to um, the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, let me get organized here a little bit. <clears throat> yes, the book of Philippians, <clears throat> especially Philippians chapter 3 and verses um, 13, 12 to 14. The message that I will be sharing with you this morning is a message that the Apostle Paul in several of his writings and several of his books he speaks about the Christian race, continuing in the faith, becoming more Christ-like. <clears throat> and that's, what, that's one of the themes that we find in his writings. The importance of continuing the race, not only starting. Every race has a start, has a middle, has an ending. And so we're heading to our goal. And that's what he speaks about. So what I've entitled my message this morning is, so you can follow it easy, it's the D's, like David, the D's needed to move forward. And that's what we need to do as a church. We need to move forward. And we don't do that without the Lord's help. You know, the Apostle Paul, he was acquainted with all these races, events, the Olympics. The Olympics started in 776 before Christ. <clears throat> they went on during Paul's time. So he was acquainted with the races, with the different events. And so he makes some beautiful comparisons with the Christian's life and also, <clears throat> you know, with uh, our Lord, how we, how we move forward, how we progress, how we continue. And so... Um, with my wife, uh, we had the opportunity to visit the birthplace of the Olympics, Olympia. It was interesting, you know, uh, <clears throat> this stadium here goes back a long ways. But you could still see where I'm um, pointing there, they had numbers for, you know, the people that watched the Olympics. And it was it's really a, a, an interesting to walk through that stadium to see the different venues where they had different events. So um, these go back to the time of the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> the Olympic Games are very competitive. Only one in ten wins a medal of any kind. Eighty countries go home with no medals. So it's not easy. Athletes have to try their best, do their best. And I think there's some good comparisons here. And so I invite you once again, open your Bibles, if you open your Bibles with me, to Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. <clears throat> Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind 
straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which Jesus has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> in this passage we, that we're going to be looking at this morning, the Apostle Paul, his audience, his target is us, it's Christians. It's people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord of their lives. He's, not speaking, he's speaking to people that have accepted Jesus Christ and are justified by faith. In other words, are forgiven. And now comes the next part. Sometimes we stay in the first part. You know, justification by faith, they call it. You know, being pardoned, being forgiven, a new heart. But with that new heart, we're supposed to develop a new character, a Christ-like character. We can't stop there in the justification by faith. We need to move on. And that's what he's talking about. <clears throat> like I mentioned, his audience is people like us, Christians. How do we move forward? How do we continue the Christian life? <clears throat> so he's speaking here about character development, becoming more Christ-like. <clears throat> and that comes only, as we're going to see, through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and we grow through faith, faith in Jesus. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we can't, uh, we can't earn our salvation. You know, we just came back from a trip. We were in Chile, uh, the country of Chile. And uh, we were in Santiago. And um, they do a pilgrimage there. You know, they actually close a major freeway that connects the two largest cities in Chile. And they do a pilgrimage. People, you know go miles from these cities. And, oh, there's a place right there. <clears throat> they go miles to get to this church. You know, they, aff they afflict themselves. They, you know, some even carry a wooden cross, you know, trying to get their guilt, their, you know, forgiveness. They do all these things. They do, all these, they do this pilgrimage. There's no way we can earn our salvation. If we could earn our salvation... Jesus wouldn't have had to die for us. We cannot earn our salvation. We're saved by grace. But then comes the next part. They're living the Christian life. Being able to grow in Jesus. So I want to look at the first D. The very first D that the Apostle Paul talks about is dissatisfaction with the status quo. There's always room for improvement. We never get to the point where we say, hey, I made it. I hit the summit. I'm fine. And there's people that feel that way. You know, they feel that they know what they, what they need to know. We don't need to go praise, worship. I mean, they, but it's not so. We continue to grow, and that's what he's talking about. Dissatisfaction with the status quo. <clears throat> he says this, and this is Paul speaking. Not that I have already obtained all this. Or have already been made perfect. 13 says, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Here, here we have a giant in the Christian faith, the Apostle Paul, who felt that he was still in a growth mode, that he was still advancing in his Christian life. He says, Not that I have already made it. In other words, reach perfection. <clears throat> now, he was satisfied with Jesus 100%. I don't want to get misunderstood here. <clears throat> but with himself, he was still in a growth mode. He was still growing. There's always room for improvement. So the first essential for us to grow in our Christian experience, in our walk with the Lord, is not being satisfied with what we are. God wants to take us further deeper, in a deeper relationship with him. <clears throat> so, like Paul, we need to continue developing our character. And, um, and there's some lessons we can learn from athletes. As it has been said, <clears throat> it has been said, one of the hallmarks, excuse me, I've, I've suffered from allergies, so you have to bear with me. One of the hallmarks of great athletes is the desire to improve themselves. 
They want to do better. Every race is a new opportunity for a personal best, win a medal, break a record. So we need to press on in the Christian experience. We never come to a stopping point. We need to continue to become more Christ-like. And he's telling us how to do it. Don't be satisfied where you are, where you're at. There's room for improvement. There's room for growth. <clears throat> so what does perfection mean? We hear this word once in a while. I've had churches where I've had, <clears throat> I've had members that believe in perfectionism. But perfection is really maturing, developing, growing. It's a continuous, something continuous. And so, and one thing I want to say is that we're all in different stages of development. If for example, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a two-year-old child, let's take a two-year-old child. It's expected to have hair, it's expected to be able to... Uh, walk, say a few words, they're perfect for that stage of development. And Christ Object Lessons gives us some insights, insights into Christian growth. It says this, the plant must either grow or what? Or die. <clears throat> As its growth is silent and imperceptible, but continuous so is the development of the Christian life. At every stage of development, our life may be perfect. Yet if God's purpose for us is fulfilled, there will be continual what? Advancement. Sanctification is a work of a lifetime. <clears throat> a Christ-like character does not happen overnight. It's a continuum. It continues you know, um, we, um, we need to continue to grow in our exp experience with the Lord. I think that here's where we need to be careful. With, you know, we can't expect a new believer, a person that just accepted the Lord. Like some of the ones we're seeing, uh, got to see in the screen, to be where we are. I can't expect someone to be where I am who just accepted the Lord. And we need to be patient with our new believers. You know, I was at, I guess I can sh share this. I was at a church. I had a new believers class. I started a new believers class. <clears throat> people that were just starting. People that, you know, some were not, weren't baptized. And I remember a lady <clears throat> who was coming real faithfully, beautiful person, just a lovely a person that was seeking the Lord. And I remember her saying, you know, this weekend, I enjoyed some shrimp. I have, oh, just enjoyed a, a, a plate of shrimp. And I had a member say, that's unclean. And, you know, the poor lady didn't know what to do. We need to recognize that there's people that are still in the growth mode, that are still not there. <clears throat> we need to be, be uh, patient with them. And um, there's a bumper sticker I used to, you see it in cars, not so much anymore, <clears throat> but it, re it read like this. Be patient. God isn't done with me yet. That's for all of us. <clears throat> you have to be patient with each other. And you know, when we're talking about development, you know, children, uh, we need to be careful when, you know, especially with children where we're teaching children. We can't expect them to understand things that adults, what we teach as adults, what we're learning. We have to go to their level. They learn by object lessons, by illustrations. We can't use abstract language, for example. Um, take the Lord's hand. They expect the big hand to come down. I mean, we have to be careful in teaching youngsters, little ones, come to their level. <clears throat> Try to help them to be able to understand the things of God at their level. Now, the second thing that Paul says we need, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> a 
Okay, the, <clears throat> the second D we find in his writings is that devotion, dedication. In other words, especially in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Philippians 3.13 says the following. One thing I do, this is focus, that is devotion. Becoming more like Christ, more loving, more caring, more kind. You know, these are fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are for character development. You know, the gifts of the Spirit are for us to use in the church, like we've seen this morning. The gifts that God, if, if he calls you to do some, you know, he's going to help you. But so uh, the fruits of the Spirit are to help us develop Christmas, Christian character. <clears throat> the fruits of the Spirit are Galatians 5.22, love, peace. Notice that the first one is love. It's love. And you might say, oh, that's easy to do. You know, I love my friends. But if you go to Matthew 5 in the Beatitudes, love your enemies, those who don't treat you well. Those that have hurt you. Those that have caused you pain. That's not so easy. <clears throat> we all go through that. We've had people that have maligned us. People that have hurt us. He says, if you want to be like me, <clears throat> that's Jesus in the Beatitudes. You need to love those that have hurt you. You need to love even those that persecute you. It's not that easy. We need to grow. And these beautiful fruits of the Spirit. But here's the thing. How do we grow in these beautiful fruits? It's not by effort. It's not by trying to work at it. We need to be, according to Matthew 15, 5, we need to be connected to the vine. We need to be connected to Jesus Christ. We're not fruit producers. It says the Holy Spirit. These are... Fruits of the who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can help us to really love the unlovable. Those that cause us pain. <clears throat> so we need to be connected to the vine. And then the Holy Spirit is the one. that We're, we're fruit carriers. <clears throat> Those are beautiful fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. <clears throat> These are fruits that help us be more like Christ. They're for character development. So, like the Apostle Paul, we need to focus on Jesus. We must grow in our relationship with him to have these fruits. <clears throat> How does that happen? Staying connected with our lifeline, Jesus Christ. We need to be connected with him. People ask, how does that happen? How does that take place? <clears throat> What's our part in this relationship? Our part is we must fight <clears throat> the fight of faith. We need to, like he says in Ephesians 6.16, it says that, he says we, we need to take the shield of faith. When the temptations come, we need to be able to, in faith, go to Jesus Christ. Faith and prayer are very closely related. We need to have that communion, that connection with Jesus Christ. Once a week? No. Every day. This is a daily experience. <clears throat> We're living in end times, difficult times. And the devil is doing everything in his power to get us off track. So we need to stay in communion <clears throat> with Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Rejoice, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. So prayer, there's power in prayer. Bible study, continue to learn a disciple of Christ, disciple in 
in the Greek, patetis, means learner. We never stop learning. We need to be like the Bereans. The Bereans, <coughs> excuse me. The Bereans, I'm going to try putting it here, hopefully I'm full. The Bereans, it says in um, Acts 17, 11, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. We need to take time with the word. We need to take time with the Bible. It's good counsel in order to grow spiritually and become more Christ-like. What else? Service, like we've heard this morning. Service to God. He came to serve, not to be what? Served. We need to take time for service. Take time to use those abilities, those talents, those attributes that God has given each one of us so that we can help others know about Jesus. So service and also, you know what happens? We need to be outward focused and not inward focused. Being outward focused, trying to help us, think of others, helping others. How can we help in our family? <clears throat> How can we help others grow? Your character means a lot. The character you're developing with your children, what they see. They're like a little sponge. They watch what kind of person you are. We need to be careful in our witness. And so we need to be men and women of service, serving others. We forget about ourselves. And you know, one thing I've learned in ministry, <laughs> the more we help others, we're helping ourselves. Amen. Outward focus, <clears throat> not inward focus. And like this morning, it was so beautiful to, to hear the praise team. <clears throat> we're here to praise God, worship God. We grow as a church by bringing ourselves here and praising God, worshiping God. It's so beautiful. You know, once again, we can learn from athletes. <clears throat> One of the greatest swimmers of all time, Michael Phelps, he did something that seemed impossible. <clears throat> Mark Spitz used to hold the record for the most, uh, most uh, uh, gold medals won in one Olympics. He won seven in seven different swimming events. They said that record was unbro un unbreakable. I mean, seven gold medals in uh, one Olympics. Michael Phelps won eight. And I mean, he won eight, he broke that record. But you know what? He was devoted to his sport. I mean, the hours that it took to get there, you know, it didn't happen overnight. 